record for my folks that are not um, in the Zoom right now. All right, so I'm going to start off with one that's not too bad, just so you can get a feel for the process. So the first equation is x minus 4y plus 3z equals negative 27. Then our next equation is going to be 2x plus 2y minus 3z equals 22. And then we've got this little weird one. Okay, so whenever we are uh, trying to use the substitution method, one of the things that um, we kind of want to have as our goal is if we're going to use substitution, the nice thing about substitution is usually we would only choose to, to select that method. Because let's be real, in real life, like if you were like in math class practicing the skill and you had to solve a system for some reason, you would use whatever method was the easiest for that problem. So that's what I want to try to highlight today is if you had a situation where um, one of your equations was already in terms of like maybe one or two variables, instead of having to do the multiple rounds of elimination stuff, you could do that here. But this one, we could also um, kind of get a little bit of help here. And we could solve for the value of z right off the bat. So with substitution, let's say, okay, I don't want to do elimination. I'm trying to change it up. Um, but I see that the z is quite easy to get alone. Um, and so one of the things I want you to kind of look to do here um, is pick the easiest equation to solve for um, one of your variables. I don't know how to word that without getting more lengthy. But essentially what I'm saying is look at all your equations and a lot of times if substitution is your be best method, there's probably one that's pretty simple to get one of the variables alone in. And so in this case, obviously this little guy here at the bottom, uh, 4z equals negative 16, that's gonna be um, significantly easier to mess with than having to start doing elimination uh, method with our top equations. So to do that, I'm just going to jump right in um, and then just kind of, you know, come, come over here. If 4z equals negative 16, then that means that z equals negative 4, just dividing both sides by 4. Now, like the name suggests, substitution. Once you have a value of one of the variables, I can simplify my other equations and essentially get rid of that z term by substituting in this value of z. Now, you could technically use elimination, like there, this one's kind of set up for it, so this one could really go either way. But again, just trying to show a different method. We're just learning um, a, a, an alternate option. Let's use substitution instead. So instead of adding these, let's substitute. What I mean by the substituting is let's take the top equation and where z is, let's replace it with what we know z to be equal to from our third equation. So for our top equation, probably different color. And then um, we could go ahead and solve this one out. Three times negative four is minus 12. That's a negative 12. Move that 12 to the other side of the equal to sign because we want to combine it with the negative 27. So we're going to add 12 on both sides. Okay, now we have 
x minus 4y equals negative 15. Now what we did right here with the substituting of the negative 4 for the z in the top equation, we're going to do the same thing with the bottom equation. So we're going to substitute, we're going to replace that z, because if we can get it down to a 2 by 2, that's what we've been working with since Algebra 1 days. So let's try to get this down to a 2 by 2. I should have done this one in red to be consistent. But just showing that I'm, I'm substituting in that negative 4. Subtract the 12 on both sides. Okay, now you have essentially a highlight here. So now it's like we've got two new equations. And if I gave you this as a system, going back to like the first week of actual algebra that we did together, and I was like, hey guys, here are two equations. You can solve them by graphing, elimination, or substitution. You have two, two variables, two equations. That's, that's where we are at this point. So we did this little extra business here to get our sum back to a place where we have two equations with two variables. And now you pick your method. I would say for this one, graphing is going to kind of suck um, just because you have more rearranging to do. Um, it's not, it, elimination isn't the worst because you could just multiply this equation to cancel the y's um or cancel x's depending on how you wanted to look at it but since we're we're on a we're working a, a bunch of problems with the name substitution in the notes for the day um i'm going to choose to do substitution here again so i'm going to do substitution so i'm going to repeat substitution um to solve this two by two system and so for substitution, remember we said get the easiest variable. So looking at your two equations, find the easiest thing to isolate. Get the variable alone in the easiest way that you can. So for my brain, I look at our pink equation and I say, let me get x by itself because that's the, the least amount of moves that, that I have to make here. So if I solve this equation for x, that would just look like adding 4y on both sides. I need my 4 in there. So just adding 4y to move it over. And I'm going to need you all to give me some feedback because I typically show all of that, like those extra steps. But when I walk around the room last class anyway, I was really impressed by like how well y'all were handling that. So I don't want to take up too much, um, you know, show every little step when you don't need me to, but I also don't want, um, if, if, you know, if half the class needs me to show, okay, I added four Y on both sides and then I'll do it. Um, but if you don't need me to do that, then I'm just wasting everybody's time and paper by making us write that extra step. So um, we'll, I'll, we'll just kind of see, I'm still getting to know kind of where we are, but uh, I'm gonna start making some of the shortcuts because it seemed like a lot of you were making them yourselves. So. At this point, um, if we have X isolated, remember with old school, this is a good review because you got that test coming up. So the, the test is gonna have two by twos on there too. So once you're at a two by two, one option for substitution, right? Get one variable alone in one equation, check. Substitute, hence the name substitution, substitute that in to your other equation. So going back, so we haven't used this one. This is our unused equation. We're going to replace, aka substitute, what x is equal to. So we just found x to be equal to negative 15 plus 4y. So I just replaced x and then holy moly, we finally got it, right? We finally have it down to where we only have one variable. So we already know the Z, which is nice. 
This is going to allow me to get the y. And then all I'll have to do, because it's a triple, it's the x, y, z, I'll have to go back and get that, um, that last variable. But we can handle it. So at this point, we're going to distribute. And that's going to give us negative 30 plus the 8y. Don't lose your plus 2y. Simplifying this, this is just combining our like terms right here. So I'm going to add 30 on both sides because the 30 needs to go hang out with his friend, the 10. Um, but I'm also going to combine my like terms of the 8y and the 2y. So that's going to give me 10y equals 40. Our last step to get y is to divide. And now I'm so close, right? I've got the z, I've got the y. Once you have y, go back to any of your relationships that put x and y. You could go all the way back to the beginning, but y, right? Like we've already simplified. So go get whatever the easiest way to find x is. Look, we already saw it. x is equal to negative 15 plus 4y. Use the easiest place is what I would recommend. But you can plug it in anywhere, technically. Um, but when we do that, we get x equals negative 15 uh, plus 16. So x equals positive 1. And so we want to try to write them because remember, this is this represents a place in 3D where three lines and three different planes intersect each other. So we call that an ordered triple instead of an ordered pair, but just writing it in X, Y, Z format for that one. So today it's multiple rounds of substituting. Um, I'm, I'm definitely down to do another one if y'all need. I just want to stop here and like, Questions, y'all are you're so quiet and I don't know if that means you're with me or you don't know what to ask. Questions, questions, questions. How about this poll of the class? Do you want me to do another one? Yes, okay, good, yes. We're gonna do another one. Another one. I don't know if y'all write as large as I do, but I definitely end up taking up, for these triples, I take up pretty much a page. Feels a little insane, but um, I take I take a whole page here, folks. All right, let's. Um, this is a good one in the sense that um, every once in a while we don't stick with X, Ys, and Zs. Okay, I love this problem because it shows why you need to learn this method. Every once in a while, you end up with, and I don't know, if, for those of y'all that didn't take the quiz, you don't know what I'm talking about just yet, but uh, there were a couple of questions on the quiz where you had to just set up the um, equation, but not all of them necessarily had all three variables. Like some of them, like we, you know, remember from like, back to like middle school, like do the problems where you had to solve and they give you, you know, so-and-so is twice as old as this person. And this is, this one's the oldest and that one's the youngest. And you now they give you all these different relationships and you have to make like all these different um, little e equations that represent the relationships. So let's say, you know, you're dealing with a situation where instead of finding a relationship between all three of the unknowns, we're only able to establish different relationships between two at a time. Well, when that happens, like you can't really do elimination or graphing on something like this, um, especially when you're stuck with this, like, you know, just two variables here. So, um, and they don't all have the same variables, right? So this, this problem is perfect um, for elimination or for, sorry, for substitution method, because that's really our only option. I need to go and try to get 
think of it like we want to get a two by two. So a two by two with the same variables in it. So I need to get, and it doesn't really matter how you choose it. So if you end up getting like two equations that both have P's and Q's in them, or P's and R's, or Q's and R's, it really doesn't matter. You'll get the same answer either way. But the idea here is that we want to try to get a two by two, just like we talked about with this last problem, right? We, we got that two by two, same variables um, in both equations. And then we can use some familiar um, algebra uh, as far as solving systems to, to finish that up. So for here, pick one equation to solve for one variable. And like, and just try to take some comfort in knowing that like, you really can't, you really can't choose incorrectly. I'm gonna just share my thinking on this. If you were looking at this, the reason I would recommend this one is just has less numbers in it. Like, so when I'm rearranging it, I'm gonna have less like fractions and um, numbers to multiply out and combine. So like here, when I substitute, I'm gonna have you know additional steps. Um, so I'll have different numbers and I might have to distribute through. Um, and it's not that it's a big deal at all. It's just that if you let me pick, I'm gonna pick the most basic looking of the three and go after one of those variables. So to me, this little bottom guy is the most basic, but if you, you know, if you look at the top one and you're like, I wanna solve for P, so I'm gonna move four R over, totally fine, it doesn't matter. Um, but you're just picking whatever, whatever you see, whatever you feel like is, um, you know, what you want to want to go for. But again, I like the bottom one because I feel like I don't have the negatives over here. Um, and my, I don't have any numbers uh, to, to really deal with. So for me, for our example here, I'm going to show what I would have ended up doing, which is subtracting R on both sides to get Q by itself. And you could have moved the Q over, it doesn't matter. Like you could have solved for R and had minus Q. You won't get the wrong answer, guys, I promise. So don't freeze here. Like this is a really easy place Um, because you're building your skills but you still feel a little uh, about it. And so a lot of times you'll, you'll sit here and you're like, I don't know which one I'm supposed to do. Um, you try to take some comfort in, you're gonna get the same answer. Um, it's as long as we don't make any algebraic mistakes, um, which we might, that's okay, but we're going to get the same thing. Don't worry about like, well, I picked the top equation. Now I'm going to get it wrong. It's impossible. Okay. If we follow the, the, the proper steps here, you're going to be in good shape no matter what. Now, the key here is though, that once I got Q by itself, then I have to look back at my equations and ask myself, okay, where can I make a substitution for Q? And the difference is now, it kind of does matter, right? Like, can you substitute it in to the top equation? So, okay, don't stress, right? Because if you wanted to try it, like if you looked at the top equation and you want to put in, okay, let me go plug in Q. Oh, wait, there is no Q. That just means this one is already in terms of P and R. So let's go to the next one. So when I go to my next equation, I'm going to substitute in P minus three, and I'm going to replace the Q. So this was Q. I'm going to sub in for Q with what I found it to be equal to. So remember guys, substitution is just like the name, multiple rounds of substitution. And so just showing that um, I'm replacing the Q, um, and this was this was just my um, second equation that I substituted into. So I took my second equation after I got Q alone, and I substituted in what I know Q is equal to. And the reason I did that is because I want to have an equation that is in terms of only P and R because I'm trying to get that two by two to, to happen for me. But what you have to do here first, guys, is simplify. So, at, so we did our, our round of substitution here, and then now we're gonna simplify. So to simplify that, distribute that minus three. And 
And just to make this look a little less icky, I'm gonna go ahead and add my the constant, that plus three, put that over here with that eight. And so now I have this equation in terms of P and R. And if you look at the very beginning, I've got this equation in terms of P and R. So before I finish this one, you'll have to let me know if you have questions about what I did. I can't read your minds. I wish I could make my job easier as far as teaching, but then also I would not want to know what's going on anymore. So I take it back. Uh, strictly as it pertains to math, I would like to know what's going on in your brains right now. Is there any question you want to ask me about, like, where did that number come from? What's, you know, how did you know to do that? Anything floating in your head that you want to, you want to check out with me? I have to see anybody in the chat. Y'all are okay? No questions. Freddie is joining us. All right, guys. So to bring it home, now you have two equations and two variables. So now you've got a two by two. And you can solve it by any method you want. I don't care. You can keep substituting. If you wanted to try to do some elimination, you could do elimination. Um, it doesn't really matter to me what you do. Um, because it's substitution day, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna keep doing substitution because that's really the skill that we're we're kind of practicing today. Um, you can solve either one of these equations for either letter, right? For substitution, you say solve whatever's easiest. Both of these are pretty much the same deal, right? As far as difficulty level. If you if I said, hey guys, solve for P, you pick which one's easier. It doesn't really matter. It's a coin toss here. So um, since we already got this one down here. I'm going to go ahead and solve for P in this uh, bottom equation that we've already been messing with. And so that would just look like me subtracting the 3R on both sides. Once you have um, that isolated, now we're going to go back and we're just going to do the same thing that we did um, you know, during week one. Grab that original equation that you haven't used yet and we're going to replace P with what we found it to be equal to in this problem. So instead of having P plus 4R, we're going to just plug in what P is equal to. So if we say that making that substitution here for P, plugging that in, plus 4R equals negative 7. Oh no, I hate this, I'm running into my other, other problem. Um, there's nothing to distribute here, so we combine like terms. Negative three R plus four R is just a positive one R. We still got that negative five there. Um, and then adding five on both sides to get R alone is a negative two. Now this one was a little bit more of a pain to get, like we just now got R, we still still need to get Q and P. Um, but what we talked about, like just go find the easiest ways to get them. So like if I need P, well, now that I have R, I could substitute it in over here to get what the value P is. So using that, using that value of R we just got, um, this is a negative five plus six, negative three times negative two. Whoops, why did that turn into a six? That's a, that was a brain malfunction here. So negative five plus six, I said there was a second part, right? But that should be a one. Started thinking, I don't remember getting zero here. I'm not saying you can't get it, you remember getting it. Um, and then once you've got these two, you go back and find a way to get R, um, I mean, not R, Q, you could use this. So here we said Q is equal to one minus R, um, but you could use any, any of the equations from the beginning as well. Um, so if I do use that Q is equal to one minus R, I'm just gonna plug in 
This is supposed to be an R. I'm just plugging in that negative two. Q is equal to, uh, this one's gonna give us that double negative, so three. Now, if putting this together as an ordered pair, sometimes depending on the letters, like X, Y, Z, like kind of goes together. And so, you know, if we do want to like write it as like P, Q, R, um, I, I, I like it. Um, but I also know that sometimes with the word problems that we select, we don't necessarily pick like consecutive letters. Like, so if you're depending on the context of the problem, like one of those was talking about like computers or something like that, like we use all different letters for like Hewlett Packard and blah, blah, blah. So if you don't have letters that are consecutive, like ABC, then you don't necessarily have to write that. I would be completely fine um, with you just doing that too, depending on the context of the problem. So um, just depends on, on the scenario, but especially word problems. If we're not using X, Y, and Z, um, they don't necessarily make sense to have to put them in that in that ordered pair. So um, I really think like today I don't want to I don't want to really make us do um, any more as far as like example stuff. I want to just if you have more questions, I would like to walk around the room and then get on the Zoom and then just help you guys with the problems today. That way, if you have to do more problems together, that's totally fine. Um, but I would love for the problems we do together to be part of like the assignment and then that way you're making progress on like knocking those out. Um, as I'm about to pull that up, do I have questions on, um, on this one though? Look y'all, y'all are the quietest folks right now. Breaking me out a little bit. Um, let's see here. So, what did I say? What did I say to do here? So, we're in the Wednesday, Thursday folder. We just did our notes. Um, the completed notes are on there. The two examples that we did um, for my folks that just came in. I am I'm actually going to stop recording it now. Um,